it's time for the Longines Chronoscope, a television journal of the important issues of the hour, brought to you every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. A presentation of the Longines Whitnor Watch Company, maker of Longines, the world's most honored watch, and Whitnor, distinguished companion to the world-honored Longines. Good evening, this is Frank Knight. May I introduce our co-editors for this edition of the Longines Chronoscope? Mr. William Bradford Huey, editor of the American Mercury, and Mr. Donald I. Rogers, an editor of the New York Herald Tribune. Our distinguished guest for this evening is Mr. James M. Meade, chairman of the Federal Trade Commission. The opinions expressed are necessarily those of the speakers. Senator Meade, as chairman of the Federal Trade Commission, it's your job to police the government, police business of America, to see that there's no monopoly and to see that there's free, uh, free flow of goods and prices. Now, very recently, uh, your agency uh, filed a suit, or uh, filed a report, I should say, against five American oil companies doing business in the Mediterranean, in which you charged them with having a monopoly or a world cartel. This government is traditionally against monopolies, so we'd like to have you explain to us about uh, how you reach these conclusions and why you think these companies are reprehensible. Well, <coughs> Mr. Rogers, uh, it is true, as you say, that the Federal Trade Commission is uh, more or less like a policeman on the beat to uh, keep down, prevent monopolies, so that they will not interfere with competition or prove ruinous to small business. Now, there were many opportunities that would bring to our attention the fact that there was uh, monopolies developing in the petroleum or oil business, and particularly uh, in the Middle East. Now, specifically by monopoly, you mean the fixing of prices. Fixing of prices, uh, division of uh, areas and marketing uh, agreements and other things that have a tendency to uh, restrain the free flow of trade. Does it not seem remarkable to you, sir, that this report was filed in this particular year, a political year? Well, uh, no, it is, there isn't anything remarkable about it because, uh, well, in 1943, when I was on the Truman Committee, accompanied by Senator Brewster, we made some preliminary investigations in the Middle East uh, with reference to this question. And then uh, later on in the 80th Congress, Senator Brewster and a committee that he headed made a uh, investigation of the oil monopolies. It was therefore brought to our attention and uh, there were other reasons too why we entered into the investigation and surely the policeman on the beat had to take cognizance of it and if our domestic com companies were engaged in a monopoly producing uh, proposition, joining in a cartel, fixing prices, dividing areas, we would be reluctant in the Federal Trade Commission if we didn't do something about it. I noticed uh, that as a policeman on the beat, sir, you're already calling them monopolies, and they've not been adjudged monopolies as yet, have they, sir? Oh, no, they... Uh, this is merely a report you have issued. Yes, we And have it is not a full report, it is merely a staff report to the Federal Trade Commission, isn't it? It, it is a staff report taken over by the Senate Committee on Small Business. It is factual, informative, it makes no charges, offers no recommendation, it merely states the case, and the Senate Small Business Committee will shortly initiate hearings and give all sides an opportunity to state their case in the real American fashion. Well, Senator, just a moment, uh, for the benefit of all the people around New York who knew you for a long time, you were in Congress for many years, weren't you? Yes, I, I was in Congress for 20 years, and, and you later in the, in the Senate. We keep referring to you as senator here. Of course, you were a senator from New York up to 1946, and then later the, uh, you were appointed as chairman of the Federal Trade Commission. Yes, and there is an old saying that once a senator, always a senator, and it being an exclusive club, former members of the, senator, of the Senate like to retain uh, uh, that title. Now, to come back and to simplify this uh, little battle that you are joining, 
Uh, what American oil companies, sir, are involved in this action? Well, according to the record contained in our report, uh, there are five American companies. The uh, Sokony Vacony, uh, Vacuum, Standard Oil of New Jersey, Anglo-Persian, uh, Shell, Gulf, Atlantic, and Texas. I believe I have more. I see. And, those, those are the, and, and the charge simply is, or it isn't a charge, what you are looking into is to see whether these companies uh, uh, may be charging a too high a price for the oil that they are producing in the Middle East? Yes, that is uh, uh, the major, one of the major points. We uh, believe that where uh, price fixing, marketing areas, or uh, other uh, agreements of that character are arrived at, that the buying public suffers. Now, how long have the American companies been over in the Middle East, approximately? Well, back in 1922, when there was a fear that we were uh, suffering from uh, a petroleum shortage, our companies uh, became interested in, middle, in the Middle East. Now, they've, they've done a pretty good job in developing oil supplies over there, haven't they? Well, if you'd compare them with uh, the competition they met over there, I'd say they, uh, they've uh, uh, done a superior job. And our, our viewers have heard uh, several experts on this program say that compared to the British and others, that our companies are, are doing a pretty good job in the Middle East. They, uh, they let the natives uh, uh, advance further in the companies. They give a little bit more money. They, they pay more uh, for the oil to those companies. And so there is a good deal to be said uh, that's good for our companies over there, isn't there? Yes, I was rather proud of the American companies because I understood that some of the uh, opposition from other countries went into Saudi Arabia and failed to find that great reserve of oil that American engineers and experts found there. And so I was rather proud and, of our company. And what they're doing now, they sell oil in the Middle East, essentially to our Navy, mm -hmm. and then they sell it uh, to our allies in, in, in Western Europe that we, that we are giving money to. So mm -hmm. they're, they're selling, the American taxpayer is involved in two places, isn't he? Yes, the American taxpayer is involved, and by reason of the fact that he's involved and that there is price fixing, we feel that he is, isn't being treated fairly, and that's why the policeman is on the job. Well, actually, if, if the oil was not supplied by these American companies to Western Europe, we would be taking oil from America and giving it to Western Europe, would we not? Uh, if uh, there was no oil available there, and if we... Uh, well, there uh, is no oil available there, other than the oil that, there, that the American companies are bringing from the Mediterranean, is there? Well, there are other companies besides American companies still functioning over there. Would you uh, prefer to have the uh, oil come from foreign com uh, companies? Oh, no, no, we, we want the oil to come from there, so far as I'm concerned, because, uh, as you remember, Secretary Hickey said quite some time ago that we haven't got enough oil in this company to oil another war. That's right. And only yesterday, Governor Shivers, I at a big oil uh, conference in Western Canada, said that our known reserves may run out in about 12 and a half years. Yes, sir. Now, our biggest supplier of oil right now is Venezuela, is it not? The biggest, uh, the biggest supplier so of oil uh, imported in the United States is from Venezuela. Uh, so far as we're concerned, yes. Yes. Now, 24 hours after your report appeared, we carried an item in the New York Herald Tribune saying that the Venezuelan press, for the first time in history, had demanded nationalization of Venezuelan oil as a result of your charges of cartelization or monopolies by the oil companies. Mm -hmm. You see, some of the same oil companies that operate in the Middle East also operate in Venezuela. Mm -hmm. uh, what do you feel about that? Don't you think your agency has a responsibility toward other sources of supply, uh, toward the American citizen? You're concerned about the American citizen paying a price in, in Europe. How about the American citizen's supply of oil and the price he might have to pay if his sources here are nationalized? Well, no good policeman uh, coming across uh, a crime or one about to commit a crime could stop to consider the eventualities of any interference on his part. His loan duty as our loan duty is to stop, to nip in the bud, to be a real policeman on the beat, and where we see monopoly, 
It is our duty, it is contained in the statutes, to stop it. And we believe... Now, to get to the crime, that. sir, uh, you uh, one of the points you make is that these uh, companies in, in the Mediterranean have organized their and controlled their production so that uh, when there's an oil scarcity, uh, they can produce oil, and when there's too much oil, they won't produce oil. Uh, do you hold that to be reprehensible? Well, that's only uh, one item in the long list of items that are involved in this monopoly that we have reported upon. It is not only uh, dividing up the production, it is not only dividing up the markets. But isn't that just what we do uh, here in the United States? No, we don't do anything like that in the United States. If it comes to the attention of the Federal Trade Commission, we have antitrust laws in the United States that would eliminate any price fixing, would eliminate uh, any division of the market, or would eliminate <coughs> any restraint that well, would Senator, stop the free flow of, of, of uh, oil to our people. To sum this uh, interesting little dispute, there's going to be a long lawsuit. Of course, many suits filed as a result of this. Now, uh, to sum it up, however, our companies are in the Middle East. They've done a pretty good job in development and in relations with those countries there. You are doing your job in, uh, in serving as the watchdog and in inquiring as to whether they're going to charge too much or have charged too much. And I imagine that our viewers are interested as a final observation in only one point. Uh, since you are an old friend of the President's, Mr. Truman's, uh, do you think that it's uh, quite fair, or, or is there any politics in your harassing the, uh, the American oil companies right at this particular time? Oh, no, not a bit. Uh, I doubt very much whether there is uh, uh, any politics in the uh, division that developed this report. Well, I'm, we I'm, are a bipartisan agency <laughs> made up of representatives well, of I'm, both political I'm sorry, parties. Sir. I'm sorry, sir. Our time is up at the moment. Thank you very much for being with us tonight. Thank you. The editorial board for this edition of the Longine Chronoscope was Mr. William Bradford Huey and Mr. Donald I. Rogers. Our distinguished guest was former Senator James M. Meade, Chairman of the Federal Trade Commission. Buying a Longine watch is like acquiring a custom-made watch, custom-made to your individual order. Longine has always recognized that the purchasers of watches of Longine quality expect this exclusiveness. These watches are only a few of the many hundreds of styles and models which Longines produces each year to meet every taste and every preference. And this Longines watch, as of all Longines watches, it can be said, this is the world's most honored watch. For every Longines watch is made to a single high standard of excellence. The unique Longines standard that has won for Longines watches, 10 World's Fair grand prizes, 28 gold medal awards, and highest honors for accuracy from the leading government observatories. For it's on merit alone that Longines became the world's most honored watch. The Longines watches now at your jeweler are unmatched for beauty of appearance and excellence of construction, the perfected product of almost a century of fine watchmaking experience. And yet do you know that you can buy and own or buy and proudly give a Longines watch for as little as seventy-one fifty, Longines, the world's most honored watch. Premier product of the Longines Whitnor Watch Company. Since 1866, maker of watches of the highest character. We invite you to join us every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday evening at this same time for the Longines Chronoscope, a television journal of the important issues of the hour, broadcast on behalf of Longines, the world's most honored watch, and Whitnor, distinguished companion to the world honored Longines. This is the CBS Television Network. <laughs>